Yes, sir. Big Stewie checking in, man. Trapping out the trap house. You know what's going on, man. Get what? 15 years. 15 year anniversary of College Hill, man. You know, I'm a BET affiliate. You know, I held it down that Rap City thing. You know what I'm saying? They just called me about a documentary. <laughs> just slid in my DMs. You know what I'm saying? I'm still popping. But I got my girl, I, my neighbor, my friend, Ashley L. checking in from College Hill. What's going on, Ash? Man, what is up? Life man? after College Hill. Life after college, Hill, man. First of all, can you stop calling me Roger? Okay, no, I can't. So, first of all, me and my mom and my sister were the only people in the world who called Jay Nix Roger. <laughs> For years, we lived next door to each other. And so, it was me and my sister, and we were like sister, sister. And he was Roger because we had, like, we would go to each other's, like, house through, like, the back door. And so, when he would have a girl, <laughs> it'd be like, yo, I just need some sugar or something. Like, I don't really need nothing. But when I tell you, that, that was a difficult moment because it was a couple girls that was like, who is it? I'm like, that's my neighbor, bro. Like, that's my neighbor. She just happened to be fine. You know what I'm saying? It's good. So tell me about College Hill, man. How was that experience, man? 15 years later. Um, Man, it was an interesting experience. Like, looking back now, there are a lot of things that I would have done. And there are a lot of things that, of course, I would still have continued to do. Right. Um, being on the show was crazy just because when you go into the house, it's eight people. And some of us, we knew each other. Some of us, some of us, we didn't. So it was just a matter of getting to know different personalities and being under somebody's camera mic'd up all the time I still have issues with you know going to somebody's bathroom or going to somebody's house using their restroom and running the water just because you have that mindset of you're constantly being recorded and that's still a thing 15 years later so you so you really got like a like a issues like I mean, yeah. You need a, counseling or something. No, it's not a counseling. But you thing. just said like you still have issues about just running water in somebody's bathroom is just the mindset of being recorded. Well, when you're in the house for like two months consistently and you're mic'd up, the only time you're not microphoned is when you're in the shower. So when you're going to the restroom, you have to run water because you know that there's someone listening to you use mm. the restroom. So that was like always in my mind. So when I go to someone's house, I like run the water a little <laughs> bit because I don't want them to hear me. Using a restroom. It's just a thing. That's crazy. So would you ever do it again? Like, I, I know a lot of people always say, I want to be on a reality TV show, but it's really kind of stressful because you you open yourself up for just all type of controversy. People on Instagram and Twitter. It's probably even worse now because now you got Instagram, you got Twitter, all the social media is like, they can directly hit you. It's like, yo, you ugly. Or yo, you this. Oh, yo, you that. <laughs> or yo, you fat. Like, I've been called a stud before just being on, <laughs> being on Love and Hip Hop. I'm like, damn, I don't even know these people. You know what I'm saying? So how is that mindset? Because people don't understand like how difficult that is. I mean, that's the thing. A lot of people don't understand that when you go to different places, especially once the show is aired, a lot of people feel like because you're on TV that they personally know you. Mm. And they don't because they don't understand that there's a such thing as an editing room and post-production and so forth. I remember one particular time I was out eating with a couple of friends and I was in like a Chili's or something having margaritas. Mm. And this girl, she's like looking at me sideways. And so she was like, so you going to act like you don't know me? And I was just like... I, I don't, like, do you know me? Like, are you from Savannah? Like, what's right. up? And she's just like, no, nah, I went to such and such. And she named, like, somewhere, and, like, I couldn't even tell you. But I'm like, I've never been there in my life. Right. I have no idea what you're talking about. And it took my home girl being like, you know she's, like, on TV or something. I'm like, that's none of her fucking, like, that's none of her, that's none of her good. business. Like, so, it's just, and she, was, and she felt stupid. And it was right. just like, oh, man, I apologize. I'm so sorry. Oh, man, I love you. I didn't even realize. I thought you was my friend. I thought, and it's just like, no, but people have that mindset where they feel like they can tell you whatever they want because they see a part of you right. displayed on television. Right. What was the most difficult part of just being on College Hill? Like, you know what I'm saying? With just dealing with people and dealing with just your, uh, I guess, housemates. Um, honestly, the hardest part of being on that entire show, I would say, was the season finale. Mm. The reason that was the hardest part for me is because I've probably had the same phone number back then since I was like in eighth grade. So what they did was, however they aired it, they aired my phone number and something that I wrote. And I had hundreds of hundreds of people calling me that night. Like, I had to change my phone number. It was a huge thing for me. Like, I was totally depressed after that. It was a lot of people I, like, lost touch with because we don't have the social media age that we had back then. Right. So it was a lot of things that had to change about my life and, like, trying to disassociate myself with, like, everything after that. Like, the network was, yeah, we weren't seeing eye to eye on a lot of things. And right. I felt like because of that, I personally felt that it was purposely done or it was maliciously done. So we just haven't been in arms ever since after that right so like even like college year reunions like anything that's coming up with be never invited wow i was purposely left off of them going to 106 and park let me tell you a funny story i was upstairs in my bonus room mm -hmm. knocked out sleep i get a phone call i remember from cortez 
um, Wayne's manager. Like we were really cool or whatever at the time. Not pers- not specifically Cortez, um, but like Young Money in general. Mm-hmm. Like I was um, working on their tour and so forth at the time. Like before I went on the show, and there was a particular night where <laughs> I actually got arrested. Never told this story before, but I actually got arrested. And um, Cortez, Lil Wayne, like Mac Man, like everybody was supposed to come to the house that night. Ended up getting arrested. It was a big ordeal. We got into an argument with my cast because it was such a big deal of me trying to keep it a secret. Mm. And so when everything like took place, like afterwards, I had so many things online as far as the internet goes of videos of us having conversations about things that took place in the house that was never aired that people made to be something different. Mm. So that's very hard being on TV and listening to stuff and watching stuff. And you know you, you know what happened, but you also know that people can put whatever they want anywhere. Pretty much control it and, and exactly. chop it up the way they want control to. Control the so, so reality TV is really not reality TV. I mean, it's not reality because you got to think about it. You have eight people in a house. We're college students. We barely know each other. We have two computers. We have one landline, no call waiting. One of the computers has internet. You have assignments due. You have classes. You don't have cell phones. There's no TV. So you're put in positions to, you know, argue and bicker and so forth. So they're, you know, intense situations. They're just seeing how you're going to handle it, seeing what you do, like getting these different personalities together to see exactly how you play around with each other to get that entertainment to get that storyline that they mm. pretty much put out for you that you had no idea you were a part of. Mm. So they don't even just give you the whole rundown of what be going on. It's just like put you in a spot and just like swim. Uh, no. So there was this one particular time, like one of the biggest nights that we had was an argument between Drew and I, mm. because the reason it became so big, because I threatened to leave the show at the time because my family is huge to me. You know that. Right. And so um, my pa- my parents were coming in town, my sister and so forth, and um, it was the night of the BET Awards that year. And so uh, production was telling me that I couldn't have my family over because we had to go to the awards show the next day mm. and it was going to be a busy day for us. And so my mindset was, y'all let Drew bring whoever y'all want, whenever y'all want, because it was good TV for you all. But I want to bring my family. And now y'all are just like, well, we don't have time for that. It wasn't until I literally packed my suitcase and got it down the stairs that our little production phone rang. And he was just like, hey, um, we're going to block this amount of time tomorrow for you to be able to see your family. So then because I made that big stink because I was ready to lead a show because I hadn't seen my family like three months. Mm. And so um, my nephew had just been born. So because of that, when we had the whole situation where Drew was on the phone and my family was there, I felt it so disrespectful because I was willing to just throw all of that away for these people. And you couldn't even give me a moment with them. Right. So then that turned into us going in a dinner and us having a seat in chart. And I'm like, <coughs> excuse me, I'm like, I'm grown. I am not about to sit here and be placed next to somebody who you all know that I have issues with that I just got into an argument with. Mm. Like, we'll be off somewhere in London, and they'll put me off to the side and try to give me a little pep talk and say, Ashley, you know, we really need you to sit right here and do this and, you know, talk to Drew and tell us how that makes you feel. I'm just like, but you know how it makes me feel. Like, why are you amping me up to put me in this situation when you already know all you're going to do is put a camera in my face to get my reaction on how I feel immediately at this moment? Right. So all of that just goes to show you that nothing in reality is really reality because there's always a storyline. So they're almost like manipulating every situation. Yeah. Have you you seen Drew since? since, since I have, actually. I have seen Drew. How was that? Um, Good. I mean, we actually had a moment where we talked it out. Um, My house typically seems to be the go-to house of people from all seasons, really. Mm. So there was one particular time back in 2020, we all got together and, um, you know, hung out with Drew. We got a chance to talk. You know, we shared our ideas of crystals and literally, you know, how we felt like we were cheated out of everybody on the show Mm. because we felt like it was our issues with each other and, you know, our head butting and bickering and our arguments that really brought the drama to the show. Mm. And we felt that we were the most disregarded out of everyone else. Wow! It was like our personalities that you that you brought us onto the show for that you love that you made profit off of then we have it where after the show is over you don't want to deal with the same personality that you made money off of right. but it's like this is what you brought us on for so so how is how does the money work how does that work money what There's wait man what no money first of all manipulation is a thing and I'm going to say this, like, just to anybody who really feels like they really want to get into a reality show. Now, I don't really know how it is now, but, again, I'm an OG in the game. Mm-hmm. This is 15 years in the making. Right. 
So when College Hill came out, we literally had like a per diem. Like it was a per diem that was in place. We probably got like maybe like two hundred dollars a week or something like that. That's it. We got unlimited Dr. Pepper and like Papa John's or something. And then it was like Dr. Miracles. We were constant Dr. Miracle product um, ambassadors, like spokesmodels. All and the no time. money from it. No money. I am old, but you know it's it is what it is. You you look good. Thank you. Of course, you know black don't crack. Yeah. Um, where's that? So yeah. That's crazy. So no money. No. Two months of just sitting there, people filming your life, going through it, stress, no nothing. And then, you know, I had the house at the time, yeah. so I had a mortgage still. Right, I already so know. So I was still, you know, still working and so forth, doing events and promotions and everything. But it was limited because I still was, you know, I still signed up for this. Right. But what's so crazy about me signing up for the show is after it was all said and done, I realized they did not have my contract. They sent me my contract, like maybe a couple of months after and kept contacting me like, Hey Ashley, like we really need you to sign this and send it back. Mm -mm, Y'all didn't air my phone number. You think I care about this contract now? Mm. I don't. Wow. I don't. Wow. So life after college, your house is going. I mean, it's great. I'm happy. Um, I would like to say I have a regular life because I like to go outside and enjoy time with my daughter and my man and my family and not be bothered. And that's really something that I actually enjoy. Um, I do still work kind of in the industry, just behind the scenes. Right. Um, I work in at L.A. a lot. I actually just landed this morning. I was okay. telling you that. Appreciate that um, coming through. Yeah, man. You know, it's all love. We we years into making We right. years back. Um, but yeah, so... Everything from brand managing. I work with my boyfriend, Lorenz Davis Media. He has a production company. Um, he, he has clients, everybody from the gathering spot. Um, it's a plethora. I can't even name them all. But I also work in L.A. a lot with Peach Western Photography. Um, I'm actually one of her assistant directors for the photo shoots and stuff that she works on as well. Um, I manage her as well sometimes for the events that she works. Um, it's a lot of stuff that I have going on as far as... Um, Stuff here in Atlanta. My best friend has a business here. Um, it's called Juiced Up Inc. Okay. Um, it's 1060 Ralph Daver Abernathy. I work with her as well because she hires uh, autistic persons to People, assist yeah. her. Yeah. To assist her in um, starting her business or not really starting her business. She already has it together. But she has them and she brings them in to, you know, teach them, educate them on different workspaces, different things to do, health, juicing. She does yoga. So I help her with that branding for that and just setting up events so with all of that how do you have time for mommy life like how yeah. do you have time for mommy life and your daughter's how old now she's 14 she just turned wow. 14 yes she d i'm old man it's crazy time flies i know just turned 14 i mean that's my priority being a mom is literally my favorite thing to do everything else i do it because not only do i get paid for it but i do it out of love because i love these people but being a mom i mean i it's my favorite thing. Yeah. I gave up a lot to be a mother, and I would never change or take anything back from that. And I have to salute you because you've always been like a, just a giving person and um, always held people down. They, even when people didn't hold you down. You know what I'm saying? Because I know situations about people that ain't held you down. <laughs> Do you want to talk about that? I mean, um, those who know me know that there have been situations or a person in particular who... Did not hold me down, and I held them down. And um, I'm gonna say it. I mean, I'm gonna say it. Okay. Your child's father, because I, 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 <laughs> and the reason why I say this is because I, I, I know you, and I remember. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How was the relationship with Lucky Day? Because that's actually your child's father. Um, that is my child's father. Uh, we share a 14 year old daughter. Um. We're we're working on that, okay. And you know, um, taking the high road, uh, we 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 are working on. We're working. I, I don't. We're working. You swing I, that listen, What's listen, going on, friend? I I'm I'm, I'm high roading it. I love my baby. That's my girl. Cadence is my top priority, and I will never intentionally say anything to be spiteful to, to hurt my baby because she loves that man and I right. love her too much for that. So um, high roading it. Um, I can't thank him enough for the person that he created with me Right. Um, for all of 
the time that he allotted me right. <laughs> in his absence to be there for her and to be. So how how is their relationship? Did she get to go on concerts, shows, and stuff like that? Did she get get them see perform and? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, just answering your question honestly, she's never been to um, a show or a concert. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, it's not for children. So that's that's what we say. Yeah, that's what is told. Mm. So, um, yeah, I mean, she's she's smart. She's intelligent. She's I feel like I feel she, like when, when kids get a certain age, they definitely um, realize who's there and who's not. I mean, that's one thing with me and I got like me and my, my child's mother. We have our ups and downs. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, I think we're in a good space right now. But like I said, I would never, ever um, want my kids to not know as a man, because I'm really big on fatherhood. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love my kids. My kids look like me. They, that's my twin. That, listen. How can I let my twin First down? of all, you are a spitting image of your father, okay? <laughs> when I tell you you are identical, it is insane. Well, I, I I pray that everything works out with that situation, definitely. You know what I'm saying? And and I just tell all the fathers, like, you got to make sure you, even if you have problems with the mother, you got to be there for your children because your children are watching you. They need you. You know what I'm saying? So that's just real deal, holy feel. Yeah. Really Let everybody know what you got going on, though. Man, you all can find me on Instagram, um, A-S-H-L-A-S, Ashlass. I am around um, here in Atlanta, out in uh, out in Los Angeles. Um, you can look me up on uh, social media there, Twitter as well. Same thing, A-S-H-L-A-S. Also on Facebook, Ashley Lassiter. Uh, you can also find me. As part of the directing team on Lorenz Davis Media. Come on now, Lorenz Davis Media. And LorenzDavisMedia.com. You can also find me over on his Instagram as well as Peach West Photography because, again, these are all of the business that businesses that I'm working with and parts of my brands as well as Juice Up Inc. But, um, yeah, those are all of the things that I've been working on since the show. Um, I won't take anything back. Um, and as far as Lucky Day is concerned, as f- him as an artist, I will never take away who he is as an mm. artist. He's Definitely an incredible, talented. incredible talent. And I know from shooting in the gym mm. that he has put a lot of work in. And hopefully in his absence of him putting this work in now, it will allow him the guidance in the future to know, you know, what that time would mean for our daughter. Right. So, yeah, I wish him nothing but the the best, you know, much success to him and everything that he has going on. And yeah, shout out to my baby. She's amazing. My honor look at you. I'm student. proud of you. Like, you done grown yeah. up. Yeah, man. Because the old you would have went the hell off, man. Uh, hello. <clears throat> you done grown up, man. That's, that's the mama in me. You know, I'm trying here. I'm trying. And I and I and I love it. And everything's gonna work itself out. I believe that with all my heart. So I definitely appreciate you for coming through. Of I course. love you. Oh, Tell your mama I say hey. You know my mama love you. Tell your sister I say hey. <laughs> I got to come by the house and get some. Yeah, y'all still be cooking over there? Oh, you know. Come on now. I'm coming for dinner. You know. When I'm your mama coming back? I mean, I'm a, um, my grandmother's 90th birthday is come on this now, weekend 90. in Savannah. So we're going to be there. So they're going to be whipping it up. So I'm going to make sure I bring you a plate. Come on now. Bring me a plate. And the next time y'all have a fa- some family over, I'm family now. I'm, I don't live over there no more. I know. But I'm coming still, through. Mm-hmm, for sure. All day. Appreciate you. Trap out the trap house in that big Stewie. Shout out to everybody on college. Yeah, I'm looking for the rest of y'all. Drew, where you at? I'm going to talk to you too, boy. For real, because I've been trying to find you myself. Here you talking about, man. Big Stewie, yes, Lord.